Welcome once again to our daily devotional. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, Oakland United Methodist Church, Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church here in Topeka, Kansas. Hey, we're glad you're with us today. It's always a blessing to be with you. It's a great honor to be with you. And we do look forward to this time together today where we get into God's Word, the Bible. We're so excited to have you with us today. As we start our devotional, would you join me in a short prayer? Gracious God, we know that prayer is just talking to you. And it's just sharing a few words with you, Lord, as a conversation where we speak and listen, Lord. And I pray now that, Lord, that as we're speaking to you, that we would also be willing to listen to what you have to tell us here in a few moments through your word. Lord, we give you this time. We ask your blessing upon it. And Father, I ask your blessing upon each person listening to this today, that you would be especially close to them, that you would come into their heart in a brand new way, and Lord, that you would lead us and guide us exactly where you want us to go and to do what you want us to do. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, again, this is Reverend Phil Anderson, Oakland United Methodist Church, Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church here in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. So very glad again to have you with us as we are going to look today into one particular passage of scripture from our lectionary. And that'll be today, Luke, the New Testament Gospel of Luke, chapter 14 verses 12 to 14. So if you have your Bible, I'd ask you to join along. If not, just listen in. We'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, Luke chapter 14 and verses 12 to 14. And this is Jesus speaking. Then he turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, for they will invite you back, and that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. I ask God's blessing upon the reading of that scripture right there today. You know, there's a lot to be said to this term. I'm going to take the, the term real quick. What's in it for me? It's a question, but it's a statement at the same time. What's in it for me? And if we live our lives with the what's in it for me mentality, then friends, I'm just going to be honest. We're never going to really get to that next level of being a servant the way Jesus Christ showed us, demonstrated to us that we need to be. Jesus showed us the whole idea of being a servant every step along the way of his life. He served us by opening up our blind eyes so that we could see who God really is. He served us by taking care of physical needs, by feeding people, by healing people, and probably most of all by forgiving people. You know, so many times I think the biggest single need that people have is the awareness that we are forgiven. Unless our conscience has been completely seared, which some people's conscience has been, God will eventually turn us over to that calloused conscious, I guess you could say, our, our mind has just been fried because we've just turned off God so many times. He finally just turns it over to our own devices. But I believe that comes after a long period of rejecting God. I think God will tell us that he is ever present and ready to forgive us. We just have to admit that we need that forgiveness. And so that is what's in it for us, is that God's going to forgive us. But as we go through our daily life, we have to take that awareness and not just apply it to ourselves, but we have to apply it to all of our interactions to other people. How when we relate to people or we see a need, how we have to respond to that need, not as going through some type of a mental process thinking, okay, if I give to this person, are they going to be able to return it back to me? Am I going to get a good return on my investment? Almost seeing everything we do as some type of a monetary or financial transaction. And that's not at all what God has in store for us. He wants us to give and expect nothing in return, as we see right here in Luke chapter 14. It's great to put on a banquet and a big luncheon or a dinner and invite your friends and relatives, your brothers, your sisters, your rich neighbors. And you know for a fact that when they put on a big banquet or a big luncheon or a big dinner, they're probably going to invite you to come back too. So you're not doing it necessarily for that reason. But you know, deep down, yeah, they're probably going to invite me when they have one of these things, you know. 
And, and what Jesus is simply saying is, that should never be a motivation for doing something good. We should always do something good and expect nothing in return. I remember working with a youth group back in about 1985, and I kind of came into this youth group knowing some of the students, but I really didn't know them well until I kind of took on a leadership position. And we were out at a farm west of Topeka near Maple Hill back again about 1985, I believe. And a couple of the students there, who I really didn't know it had an issue, I couldn't tell, but there had been something that happened between those two at one point. And one was a girl and one was a boy. And I don't think it was anything romantic or anything like that. I don't know what it was exactly. It was none of my business, even as a leader, and I never got into it. Because I'll tell you exactly what was spoken that night, and I'll never forget it. It's funny how we remember things 35 years after the fact, isn't it? But it was about May of 1985. I think the students were getting ready to graduate from high school, and they were all going to go their different ways. And so we had maybe 15 of us gathered around the fire, I think, uh, out in the farmland of this particular location. And the young lady said, with all earnestness, she basically just said, you know, I'm sorry for anything that's happened and come between us. And I can't remember word for word what she said, but this part I do remember. She said, but I want to I want to make sure that you know that I want to ask you for forgiveness if there's anything that I did that was wrong, that has hurt you or offended you, and that I want to be a blessing to you. I want to be a friend to you. But it's up to you whether you accept my offer of friendship. It's up to you whether you offer or that you accept my forgiveness even, or, or, my, or whether you forgive me as I've asked you to forgive me and she this is what she concluded with i'm 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 offering this to you but i she said i expect nothing in return and the way she said it was so sincere i'll never forget it it wasn't like she was upset or angry i expect nothing in return no she said you know i with great humility and love i really felt like she said i, I i'm giving you this I'm, I'm i'm offering this to you but i expect nothing in return so 35 years later i still think of that as i as i go through my life and I, I've, I've I'll tell you what that, that's freedom when you give to somebody and you expect nothing in return I mean nothing you don't even bring it up well I gave to that person you know they didn't give me nothing back you know or hey I was really nice and they treated me like that you know I ain't gonna do nothing for them again it's not the way that Christ wants us to think friends we are to hold no record of right or wrong. First Corinthians chapter 13. You know that one. It's called the love chapter. I want to read something to you from that because it, it just, I'm going to look it up here. But but I believe this is the, the, the way it is. So let's read from First Corinthians chapter 13. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. I love that. We'll come back to that. I'll just continue reading this beautiful verse, this beautiful passage. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. 
Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Well, again, it's one of the passages we read at weddings and at different times of the year. I don't know if you can ever read it enough. I think it fits in almost every circumstance. I was fortunate enough to be asked to lead a funeral service for a person a few weeks back, and they were able to pick out some scripture passages that they wanted. They picked out 1 Corinthians 13 for a funeral passage. And I thought, well, that's as appropriate for a funeral as it is for a wedding. And so we read that chapter that day. But going back to what I wanted to share with you out of this today, talking about what love is. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when truth runs out. And it keeps no record of being wronged. So many Christians, so many people, because I've heard them. I'm like, come here, break. They're always talking about how somebody wronged them years ago. Might have been their mother or their father. Could have been a brother, a sister. Family member, a friend, co-worker, neighbor. Somebody wronged them. They've never learned to let go. Got to let go. You forgive them. And then you expect nothing in return. That's the key. Is that when we forgive somebody, it's off our back. We're done. And we don't have to keep rehashing this and making it our own personal mission in life to try to figure out how can we get back at this person or when are they ever going to ask for us to, you know, when are they ever going to say they forgive us and ask us to forgive them? That may never happen. And so people are just imprisoned by their past because that's all they can think of is something that happened and how they felt like they were wronged. And they may be perfectly justified in thinking that, but that's not what Jesus wants. He wants us to let go of it and to forgive And when we do something, we don't ask the question, what's in it for me? We don't ask, well, if I give somebody something, are they going to be able to give it back to me? Jesus said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. If you've done something nice for somebody, let it go with that. Don't sit and think about it. Don't applaud yourself when no one's looking. Don't pat yourself on the back. Just let go. It's over. Now it's time to look forward. You know, as we conclude this devotional today, I think the thing to say here is the more people look back, the less that they're looking at what Christ has for them to do. They're they're just so much involved with looking in the rearview mirror of their life. And I go back to this thing I've told you before, friends, please bear with me. I I, I just feel like i got to say it again. If you have criticism in your life about people i don't care who it is whether it's the president of the united states the governor of kansas the mayor of topeka the person that's running your company your boss maybe it's your spouse maybe it's a family member a child or some relative if you have a critical spirit about somebody i'm just going to ask you this one question today I'm going to let you answer it. I'm not going to give you the answer. you got to answer it. Is that Christ-like? Is a critical spirit Christ-like? you got to answer that for yourself. We're going to conclude, conclude this study with that thought today. I just want that to be something we all take home with us and, and really ponder for the next whenever, however. And I'm just going to add one thing, then I'm done. If you decide that that is a problem in your life, there's a remedy. And that's just giving it to Jesus Christ and letting him take that critical spirit away. Doesn't mean you don't have thoughts and opinions. But if you have them, you show love. Because again, if we don't have love, we just got reading, we just got done reading in 1 Corinthians. If we don't have love, nothing else matters. Without love... Nothing else matters. And can you have love and a critical spirit at the same time? That's for you to answer. 
Well, tomorrow will be Sunday, April the 26th. I pray God will bring us back together online and that we will have a time to worship together. Again, may God bless you as we go through this time. And let's use it as a way to reach other people, maintain our contact with people through phone calls, through text messages, through email, and even a possible old-fashioned card if you feel God's leading you to send somebody an old-fashioned handwritten note and drop it in the mail. Whatever you feel like God is calling you to do, may you go ahead and do that. But let's stay in touch and we can encourage each other to stay strong during this time. We're closer to meeting now than we ever have been. God's going to get us through this. Let's just continue taking things a day at a time, even a minute at a time. He'll get us through. Amen. Well, again, this is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church. Wanted to thank you for joining us today. And before we close, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Gracious God, we cannot thank you enough. Lord, I, I, I come to you almost every day in prayer where I say the same thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you Lord, for being so good to me. Lord, my prayer today for myself and for anyone listening to this is that we would focus solely on the cross of Christ. We would focus on what Jesus Christ has done for us, the grace that he has given us, the mercy that he's given us. Lord, help us to fully embrace the gifts of salvation that Jesus Christ has given those of us who have known him and who have brought him into our lives. If you're a person listening to this today, you don't have a relationship with Christ, I would just ask you to say this prayer today. Lord, I do admit my mistakes. I admit I'm a sinner. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God, Lord Jesus, and that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose on the third day. And now you're sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty in heaven. Lord, I ask you now, Lord, in complete confidence and faith, that you would forgive me of my sins. Help me, Lord, to live solely for you each day forward wash me clean i give my life to you give me the mind of christ help me to change my thinking help me to change my outlook help me to feel joy and peace and all of the wonderful blessings that you've given to me in my heart and in my mind and in my soul lord so that i'm just overflowing with the love of god to all of those who i come in contact with I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friend, once again, we hope you'll join us again tomorrow for another of our sermons that we'll do online. This will be a new sermon. Last week we ran one from March the 8th, 2020 as a bit of a re reprise encore sermon, I guess you'd call it, because I was off the week before, so we just ran that one. But we will have a new fresh one for you, God willing, for Sunday April the 26th. It'll be the third Sunday of Easter, and I do pray you'll be with us for that. Again, uh, you have a great day in the Lord, and we ask that you would continue to follow us at kaumc.church. Invite your friends, your family members around the world even to check us out. We are hoping this will be a ministry to people all over. And we now ask God to bless you and keep you. It is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.